Here's what we're going to focus on. The lever happy, lever, lever, tomato, tomato, lever happy tuning kit. All right. It comes with a trigger, a replacement ejector and a replacement magazine follower. So first the why, why would you want to do any of this? The uh, mag follower in here is uh, aluminum. The one that comes with your 1895 is plastic. All right. So just a little bit of a more sturdy application there. The ejector in the 1895, especially with really hot hand loads, uh, has been known to break. It's some pretty cheap, you know, kind of pot metal construction. I've never had that happen. I use factory loads for the most part, but guys who run them really hot have broken them and it locks your bolt up, right? You basically got to break the gun down in order to get it apart. And then lastly, the trigger, all right? The trigger uh, factory, we're going to put it on a pull gauge here in a minute, but factory is supposedly between five and a half to seven and a half pounds, depending on how it left the factory. This one takes it down to three and a half, four pounds. All right, up first, we're going to test the pull weight on this. So the gun is under loaded all right and let's see what we get six pounds 13.9 ounces six pounds 1.3 ounces five pounds, 14.9 ounces. I'm gonna do my best to do this behind the camera without bumping it too much. All right, this first part, removing the hand guard, your mileage is gonna vary, right? If you don't have this hand guard, your process is gonna be different, but for this Midwest hand guard, there is a little Allen bolt here. I've already loosened it a little bit. Let's just make sure we have the tension off of it there. Now we're gonna remove this one here. Same on the other side. Take the hand guard off, that simple. Okay, next we have a small flathead screw right here. Now simply removing this screw should not cause the uh, mag spring to come out because there is a post in there. But be careful when you lift it off that post, your spring is gonna wanna shoot out there. All right, lift it up, pull it out, and oh, there was that mag follower. There you can see the plastic one. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this platform, and I gotta admit, this got me the first time too. Notice this big bulge right here. First time I saw this, I was like, whoa, did I have some sort of failure here? What is going on? Well, on a lever gun, when you're loading the rounds in, they're coming in at an angle through the lift gate. So that gives them room to come in and then re-angle down into the magazine tube. Does that make sense? So it comes in like this and then re-angles down, all right? So that is there for a reason. It is not a failure of any sort. All right, let's go ahead and break this kit open. Set these two aside. And there is the aluminum one on your right and the plastic factory one on the left. And now we're just gonna reverse it. So I'm gonna stick that in there. Put this guy back. We're gonna put the spring in there with the end cap. and then slide it back down on that post, replace your screw. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of blue Loctite on this screw. And we'll just replace the handguard. All right, and the mag follower is done. And now we are going to disassemble the bolt here and get it out so that I can replace that ejector. All right. And then the, you can see the other one 
right there, okay? And all I'm gonna do is slide that bolt out, and then this guy should come right out. So there you can see it's just a little piece of flimsy, let's see if I can get it to focus here. It's just a little piece of flimsy metal there in between what I've heard described as just some pop metal, this piece here. And for comparison, there's the Wild West Guns one on the right. You can see it's a single piece of spring steel. All right, now let's get this trigger out. Next up, we have to drop the hammer, all right? So underneath here, this little pin is your lever trigger safety. So you have to push that up, pull your trigger, and slowly let that hammer fall. And now you have to remove the hammer spring and the hammer spring plate. And to do that, simply push it out the side. It's gonna be under a little bit of tension and remove it. Okay, up next, we're gonna remove this screw right here. And it's probably gonna pop when I take this out. There we go. Take your hammer out of there. And next, we're gonna remove this bottom screw on the receiver. Turn it over and do the same thing with the screw on the side here. Now the last two screws that you just removed are the same pitch and look basically the same, but the one that goes in the bottom here is a little bit longer than the one that goes in the side. Just keep that in mind. Okay, and now let's give it a little, little shake here and see if we can't get this out of the bottom. There we go. And now we're just gonna punch that little pin out. There's no pressure on it, just push it out. And remove your trigger group. And here is the two-piece trigger sear kit that came out of the stock rifle. And here is the aftermarket Wild West Guns version that is all one piece. A Little bit more of a hook on the Wild West one width appears to be about the same. All right, let's reassemble this. Make sure that your sear goes over this pin and also that you engage that trigger spring right there with this side of the trigger. And that's gonna give you your tension. So push up, all right, so that the holes align and just slide your pin back in. All right, and let's put it back together. So assuming your locking block here didn't slide or do anything weird on you, it is as simple to put back together as it was to take apart. There we go. Make sure that all your holes are aligned and reinsert your screws. Remember, longer one goes in the bottom and shorter one goes in the side. And to reinstall the hammer, push up that lever safety, put your trigger to the rear, drop the hammer in, and just make sure you've got your holes lined up. All right, and if you're having a hard time getting this lined up, sometimes it helps to actually back these two back out a little bit. So I did do that off camera and I'm going to tighten them back up now. Here. And now the hammer spring and hammer spring plate. So this goes in the little notch on the bottom of the hammer spring plate there, all right? And that fits in this notch. So let's put our spring on. This is not typically the position that I do this in. That's what she said.
All right, and there you see I've got it put back in. So it typically helps if you stand it up on end and you do it from up above. It is very hard to do it this way, but basically you just have to get it aligned, pull back until it snaps into that notch. All right, continuing our reverse order of assembly here. I'm just gonna put the stock back on there. Drop what was your longest bolt. And I do have blue Loctite on all of these bolts. It's one thing I didn't show. So some people do, some people don't. And last but not least, the ejector. Now notice on the ejector here, this little nub, all right? That is actually going to come out this hole right here, okay? So from inside the gun, you gotta set it down inside that little groove. Making sure that it comes out right there, all right? And I'm gonna hold that there and reinsert my bolt. Get your lever, or your bolt, excuse me, right where it needs to be. And reinstall the lever itself. Now, Wild West does also make a quick detach, or a quick release here, so that you don't need a flathead screwdriver. Might get that next. So if you ever just need to field strip this and get your bolt out, you certainly can. Ooh, much better. Let's put this on a pull gauge. Three pounds, 10 ounces. Three pounds, 6.5 ounces. Three pounds, four ounces. <laughs> Target fell down. Target down. <laughs> <laughs>